over. And there we go. Um, so just before the stream, I spent some time trying to figure out how to Okay, let's mute that. Uh, that was really, really weird hearing <laughs> hearing myself talking to myself for a second there. Um, but um, one of my streams was playing audio, uh, which was a fun thing. So there was research done a while ago um, where a way to mess with the way that somebody thinks is give them a pair of headphones that replays what they're saying with a slight a slight delay you know whatever that delay is um and they found that you can interrupt people's thought patterns really really reliably and um it's a really really powerful way to mess up you know how people speak um i was basically doing that to myself uh, by hearing hearing in the background you know what's going on so um I'm a little bit behind on doing the upgrades. They should go pretty quick, um, but it, it's probably, I, I like to show every once in a while, you know, what I do when, I, when I'm doing the upgrades. Um, so we're using NX right now um, to do the migrations. Um, so this first migration, we just upgraded NX. Um, there were no migrations. So we're just gonna say, you know, we upgraded, um, NX, and then, you know, we're going to push that. Um, and then we're going to go check the rest of our upgrades, right? Um, I use um, NPM um, check updates. Um, it gets installed as NCU. Um, and NCU gives you a bunch of really nice tools um, that allow you to just see what changes you've got, right? So we can see here we need to upgrade Angular, um, and we need to upgrade Analog. Um, yeah, those are the big ones. This marked, I'm still not sure about. Um, we'll take a look at it later. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in a decent place. Um, I'm still just trying to figure out how we want to handle things. Um, this was my browser that I was. Get that up. This one, we want it to be here. That looks good. All right. Still getting used to like the multi-streaming. Uh, so, um, you know, if, if I get distracted, it's because I'm still trying to figure out how, how to run this stuff. Um, I'm beginning to realize I probably need to put a third monitor right up here um, where I can monitor like chat and stuff like that going on. Um, but that is something that I'm going to have to wait until I've got a little bit of cash for. Um, anyway, to, um, to migrate Angular, um, I just like to use the, um, I like to use NX migrate. Um, and the command is simple. It's just PMPM PM, NX migrate. And then if you do Angular core, it's going to get most of it. Um, if there are migrations, then I'll tend to, um, then I'll rename that migrations file, um, and then um, I'll finish up the rest of the Angular stuff, um, and then we'll run the migrations at the end, and then you know do the the install and everything. I like to do all of Angular at the same time. Um, and when I when I talk about Angular, I consider NGRX to be a part of Angular too. Um, so um, typically I'll do all of Angular, all of like if I've got component store, signal store, something in place. Um, I'll get those upgrades in there too. Um, so we can see that there were no migrations. That's great. Um, we're not going to run the PNPM install. Um, instead, we're going to go and check again because I know um, it almost always misses the Angular CLI. Um, and we did again. So these dev kit um, come along with these CLI. We're going to need to upgrade the, the schematics too. Um, and then types node will do a different way, but analog will be the other one we'll upgrade. Um, so pnpm nx migrate, and here we can just say, hey, we want to migrate Angular slash CLI, and that's going to migrate that for us. Um, 
This should be over fairly quickly. I am looking. Make sure we haven't. I'm not running up against like a, an ad break or something like that. Um, in watching back the YouTube replays, um, it just keeps going. Um, and so um, I'm going to keep going through ad breaks. I may get up and take a break. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, really depends on, you know, how long I feel like I've been sitting and things like that. So um, I guess we have, I started pretty late because I was busy reading things and lost track of time. Um, anyway, it's telling us, hey, we've got more lock file issues. Um, but we'll take a look at that here in a second. Or not lock file. More <laughs> installation, more lock file issues. Um, anyway, we we just need to upgrade the schematics. So pnpm nx migrate at schematics slash angular. And there's my notification that in 10 minutes, um, we're going to hit an ad break. Um, so um, I need to keep that kind of top of mind. Well, maybe not. But again, I'm running I'm running the recommended settings because it actually winds up being fewer random ads. Um well actually no random ads. The the ads are at expected times. Um so I can prepare for them as I watch them come up. So all right, so that that upgraded that's everything Angular wise. Um, and at this point, we haven't had any migrations. Um, so we can go ahead and run the, the commands that it recommends that we run. Um, and we can go look here at our package JSON, and we can see that it's just upgraded. And these are, these are all point releases. Um, so they're all fairly safe releases of Angular. But it's upgraded all the different Angular stuff here. Um, no migrations showed up here, so we don't have migrations.json. Um, and that's all done. Um, so now we can just say, hey, we upgraded Angular. Upgraded um, at Angular. So the last couple that we're going to do, um, again, if we take a look at NCU, and I like the format group. That's what breaks it out into um, the different levels. So the patch level, right, they show up in green. Um, this is showing up as potentially breaking um, because we're jumping seven major versions. Um, I'm willing to bet that that is guaranteed to be breaking. Um, <clears throat> and this is saying that we're in like a pre-release, um, you know, the zero releases, um, and anything can change, right? according to Semver. Uh, but we're going to upgrade our analog platform. Um, and so this is the one to grab, and it typically grabs everything else for you. Um, so pnpm nx migrate. And here we're going to go analog. <laughs> and my fingers want to type Angular, uh, which is kind of crazy. So anyway, we're, we're just about done. And then we're going to start serving up our blog, and we'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good day. Um, things, are, things have been a little bit crazy. Like yesterday, um, yesterday I had to drive into the office. Um, and I don't live too far from the, the Draper office, the Bill Draper office. Um, but I didn't realize I had agreed to go in for an in-person meeting. Um, and most of what I do with Bill is through Zoom. Um, and I attend a lot of meetings and then, you know, talk to people through like um, Slack and things like that. Um, and then, um, you know, then I've got my day-to-day -day, um, things that I do. Um, I... I'm in charge of the Angular chapter at Bill, so um, you know I I help set up like RFCs or help other teams who might be having problems with things at Bill um, with Angular wise. Um, and then I also get um, the part that I I really like about that is just being able to um, share with other people you know new stuff that's coming to Angular. So analogs all been upgraded. We just need to grab the 
block file stuff, and we'll run that. Um, and then, you know, just, just beyond that, I've got my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, we're working on a new project. Um, they just announced a new partnership, so I can start talking about the project that I've been working on. Um, but uh, the project is um, just kind of a new product that we're offering. So yeah, hey, Amuga, can you make a God-tier class for business logic? What do you mean by God-tier class for business logic? Um, and um, thank you for following. Um, voice, I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. You're going to have to tell me that one. Um, but a God tier class for business logic. I'm curious what you mean by that, because um, I'd like to maybe explore that idea a bit. Um, yeah, um, PNPM. So we installed that. Let's go say, let's go commit our analog upgrade. Um, and not analog JS. Um, so there we go. We've now upgraded analog. There's one last file that we, we can see here. Um, and that's our types node. Um, and that one I like to do with a dash U, which is up, upgrade or update. Um, and then dash I um, in NCU, um, NPM check updates. Um, and the dash I gives us a nice interface um, where we can just go and, you know, I can toggle on or off if I'm going to do this one or this one. Um, I'm only going to do the top one. Um, and so I hit enter a couple of times and it's going to install that for me. Um, and then we'll commit that and then we'll go ahead and serve our blog. Um, so here we'll stage all of that and we'll just say that we upgraded. Um, at type slash node. Um, and usually I'll, I'll call these dependencies if there's a lot of them. If there's not a lot, I'll call out the specific one that I upgraded. Um, but a God tier class for business logic. Um, I wouldn't create my own. I'll tell you that right now. I'm gonna, um, I would... Right now, there are a couple of state management libraries out there that are really, really good um, for business logic. The one that I go to the most right now is the Signal Store. Um, RX Angular is amazing. Um, and that RX Angular is probably the easiest way to get zoneless Angular right now um, until the Angular team releases the, the zoneless. Um, um, until that's released out of, you know, the, the preview that it's in now. Um, there's State Adapt, which is one that I will admit I haven't used very often. Um, and so we're going to explore that one um, in a stream here soon. Um, and then I want to go back to RX Angular and show how do we do zoneless Angular using RS Ang RX Angular. Um, and then X State is like, that's one of my absolute favorites, and I love coming back to it. Um, but um, I, yeah, we need to do another X state. Um, now that we have signals, now that we have model inputs, now that we have signal inputs, and just today I saw the tweet from Anea um, saying that we're getting the um, output. Um, the new output that works the same as like, you know, the signal input or um, the model input. Um, now that we've got those, um, you know, doing um, zoneless should be interesting. So yeah, um, and then Ionic and stuff like that too. But yeah, uh, let's see, we're, we're all upgraded. Uh, so yesterday after we upgraded, we had some breaking changes. Um, and that is to be expected when we're working with preview software. So um, analog is fairly stable. 
but we're working in particularly preview versions of analog by using the dot analog files. Um, and so um, we're just going to do pnpm nx serve and we're going to serve our blog. Um, and we'll see if this all builds. Hopefully it does. Um, one of the things I really want to take a look at is like testing. Um, and it looks like we're good here. Let's pr oh yeah, bringing this over, it looks like it works. Um, so there we go, no breaking changes today. Um, and we, you know, we we figured out the issues with our our CSS variables. Um, so our, you know, our discussion of HSL is still here. Um, but we can see the skeleton of um, what we want to do with our um, with our blog. So um, let's continue. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the layout, right? Um, so like if we swap over to a lighter mode, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to leave, I'm going to leave these in for the time being so that we can see them. Um, so we can see where the articles and things, but I'm trying to decide how we want to handle that. Um, so for the time being, they'll be here. Um, I'm going to go back to a dark mode so that I stop blinding everybody. Um, and let's let's clean this up. Um, one thing I think we're going to do is um, I had an idea um, to use um, ChatGPT and Gemini to generate some of our articles um, and our article summaries and things like that. Um, so that we can start adding content to our blog, right? Um, and we're going to do this in a very static way at first. Um, and then after the very static way, um, then we'll come back and we'll take a look at, um, I, I was looking at con like um, Contentful. Um, so uh, Content um, Full Angular. Um, so, you know, <laughs> when I was looking at this before, um, Contentful wasn't actually the top one that popped up. Um, now it is, and now Drupal's up here, but there was another one that looked interesting, um, and I'll have to see if I can find it. Um, but I, I think we might use like a headless um, CMS in the background um, and get our content from there, and then... We'll feed that into our Angular um, and see, you know, how we how we can do that. Um, so, like, if we if we look at um, Contentful, um, almost all of them, when we look under pricing, have a free tier. This is what we're going to use. Um, so, we'll see if we can set up a free tier and get that working with our blog um, and getting stuff in there. But for right now, let's uh, let's jump into it. Let's get rid of um this stuff right here so um well i need a code editor is what i need um and we're going to jump into webstorm today um and here we go um those are notifications. We're going to see, yeah, we're going to need to update the Copilot plugin. Um, and that plugin updates quite a bit. It's like almost every time I start an editor, um, the Copilot has an update. Um, so we're going to have to restart for that. Um, and once it restarts, then we'll dive in and we'll clean some stuff up. There we go. Um, and, you know, the, these are our colors here. Um, using our CSS variables, we were able to figure that out. So we're just going to pull the style off entirely. Um, and that's going to go back to our main article. 
just looking like that. And this is the really cool thing about dot analog files is this is an angular component by itself. Um, and we, we haven't had to do anything but write HTML, which is one of my absolute favorite things about angular. So this is our main article component. Um, so if we look at our homepage, um, We've got our article container and inside of our article container, um, we've got a main article. Then we'll have other articles here. Right now we're just using H1s with borders on them. Um, this one, I don't know if we want this block here. Um, we we want to move that block into, um, into our class. So in our main article component here, um, we want this to be display block. So to do that, we just add a script. Um, and we say that the language is TypeScript. Um, and from there, yeah, we're just going to define some metadata on it. Um, I'm going to accept this as it is. But really, the only thing we want to do here... Um, wow, that added quite a few classes. Um, the only thing we want to do here is add the block back, right? Um, so if we look, um, and block's just going to allow us to to treat our component like it's a, a div, basically. Um, and so if we go and inspect, um, we can see that our main article class, um, it didn't get the block. Why? Oh, it didn't get the block because for some reason, sometimes we get into the state um, where V has trouble reloading. Um, we'll go back to our editor, make sure everything's saved. Um, no, that's, that's fine. So, we look at this and we look at our home. We look at our article container. Um, so this one is a display grid um, and we should see inside of here. Yeah, display grid. Um, the main article we set up as block and there we go. Now we've got our display block. So um, it picked it up. Um, so let's figure out how we want our main article to look. What I'm thinking is we'll have an image on the side, um, of some sort, and then we'll have a title and then, you know, the blurb will go here. And then when they click on it, it will take us to the article with its ID. Right. Um, so right now let's, let's design that out. Um, we're going to take out our H1. Um, you know what? This isn't. This is no longer block. This is now going to be grid. Um, and we're going to have um, when we when we talk about this, right? Um, we're talking about one thing here, and then a title, and then the blurb, um, and so. Really, it's two columns, right? The, the image is one column, and then the rest is um, the other column. And then we are also got two rows, a top row and a bottom row. Um, and so we're going to say that we've got grid calls two. Um, and we're going to say we've got grid rows two. Um, and that's going to set things up for us. Um, now inside of our template, we've got the ability to add our image. Um, there's our image tag. Um, and um, we don't want call span, but we do want row span too on this. Um, and we're using um, Pixum, which is like the lorem ipsum generator of pictures. 
Um, so now if we go take a look, um, we should see that our picture fits here, but it it's outside of the height of our um, of our container here, right? Um, and the issue we've got is if we go take a look at our max or our, our header article, our article container, and our main article, our main article, the height on this is actually set um, through the grid column. No, it's the grid rows. Um, it's in the container. So the container has, um, it's got two columns, and then it's got one row that takes up 33%, and then the rest of the rows take up 20%. Um, so this doesn't have... Um, we don't know how big this would be, right? Because as this shrinks, um, it's going to get smaller and bigger. Um, and so this image needs to behave appropriately also. Um, so one of the first things we can do is let's just give it a max height of full. Um, so we can say max um, height is full. Um, and so that should allow it to grow and shrink. The other thing we want to do, um, we actually, we want two grid columns here. Um, we want one grid column that gives us I don't even know how much we want it to be. Um, so we'll say we want a grid column that is, um, we'll say that this grid column will be 25%. Um, and then we want a grid column that is um, auto. I think that works. Um, Let's go take a look. Um, so our 100% works, right? Our image goes right up to the border, um, and we're good. Um, but let's let's take a let's take a look at the grid on this element. Um, so if we go inspect this element, um, we can see the main article class. If we hit the grid here, um, so we've only got the rows. We don't have the columns in place. And, and the way we can tell that is that these counters up here, right? Because it's possible that the that the column maybe sits under here, um, but it does. We know it doesn't um, because we've got the one and the two here. That tells us that you know this. It doesn't. The nice thing is that we also get you know the one, and you know we get negative one through negative three, and then down here we can also see we get the negative one. So we can see where our grid lines are. I really like that about the editor in, um, well, I'll, actually it's most modern browsers now. I don't know what it's like in Safari because I avoid Safari quite a bit, but um, let's go take a look at Tailwind CSS. Um, and inside of the docs, they're gonna go look at our grid. Um, so, what we want is um, want to use an arbitrary value grid rows so it still needs to be grid rows but we're gonna we're gonna call the first one 25 percent um, and then the next one will be um, grid rows auto um, or grid call so it's grid columns was I looking at rows um, yeah I was we want to look at columns so grid temp it's just grid calls um, so same thing so here we're doing 25% and then we're doing grid calls auto um, so it should take up the rest um, and so now if we go look, now we've got 
our different um, grids in here, right? Um, what did I do? There should be one more column here. Um, I need to go take a look at what I did wrong. Um, grid calls one. Maybe that's what I want. So is grid call oh, oh grid auto columns. Um, so auto calls max. Um, no, we just want auto calls auto. Um, so this just needs to be auto here, and that should fix it. Um, so now if we go back, we didn't fix it. Um, so I think what we can do is do that. That work? Nope, that breaks it. Um, and this is me still learning Tailwind, right? Um, so if we go look at grid template columns, um, and our arbitrary values, They're separated by underscores. Um, so here, that's what's breaking it. I think we can do that. Um, and really, we could just do um, we do one. Um, how do I want to do that? like we could do one fr um but we could also do auto i think auto is probably the best way to go i think that should work so 25 percent, and then an auto column um and so if we go take a look no Um, I think I need to do one fraction. If we look at auto columns, grid auto columns auto. I don't actually want auto columns. I'm, I'm wrong here. It should be grid template columns. So setting that as auto doesn't make sense. Um, but I can set it as one fraction. So one fraction. Um, and that should... Yeah. So now we've got our 25% and then we've got our one fraction. Um, we're going to need to do the same thing for the top. Um, right? We We want... Um, a certain amount for our title, um, and we want um, the rest for the body, for the blurb, right? Um, and then we'll we'll work on fixing this image so that it's more centered. Um, so we want auto margins. Actually, that's really easy to do. Um, we just do m dash auto. Um, and that should do top and bottom and left and right. Um, inspect in article grid. And yeah, so now our main, our, uh, we're, we're centered in between, right? Um, and if there was any padding top to bottom, it would center it, you know, Horizontally, we're centered horizontally, horizontally, 
that's hilarious. That was me saying horizontal and vertically at the same time. Um, but if there was any space top or bottom, then it would center it top to bottom vertically, right? Um, so by, by just setting the margin as auto, we're going to get centered within this box nicely. Um, but let's, let's get this grid line up higher. Um, so we will go back and instead of doing grid rows two, um, we're going to do grid rows. And this is where, um, where we want to be specific about what we're doing. Um, so let's go take a look at our H1 class, right? So for right now, let's let's do um, hmm. we want it to be based on the line height of our H1. Um, and if we go look at our styles.scs or our styles.css, inside of here we applied the text for Excel. And that gives us a font size of 2.25 rem um, and a line height of 2.5 rem. Um, and so we want our title, well, do we want our title to be an H1? Um, maybe we, we want our title to be an H3. Um, and so for H3, we want to apply um, that'll work. Um, and so we'll use an H3 for our, our title. Um, and so now we can go back to our main article. Um, and inside of here, and we're, we're hard coding all of this right now to get our layouts right. Um, but once we've got our layouts right, then we can um, take a look at um, what we want to do, uh, yeah, actually, that's not bad. Um, and let's let's do something here. We'll do um, a very long blog title to test how wrapping works. Um, plus a lot of exclamations and ones and exclamations right um to go back to the old the old way that people would do stuff like this um what's weird is if i do prettier here um i do prettier reformat with prettier Doesn't look like it changed much. So, um, so here we want this to be um, slightly bigger than the line height. Um, and when we were looking at styles.scss, um, our line height is going to be 32 pixels. Um, so, you know, maybe we could do I'm like 2.2 rem for that. Um, so let's go go back to our code. Um, and in here, we can just say, hey, this is 2.2 rem. Um, and then the rest is one fraction. Um, and that's going to just use the rest of the space. Um, and so now if we go back, um, what is it saying now? That comma, it doesn't like that comma. So that comma is causing issues. Um, and now let's see if it works. There we go. Um, but it is not applying our H3. Um, and if we go take a look, we inspect this. Our H3 has the class center on it. Um, if we go take a look at our grid, our grid seems to be good. Um, 2.2 rem. 
um, which is we're using two rem here. So this should be one and a half times the size of a normal text, um, whereas this is two and a quarter times the size of normal text. Um, so there, there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference. Um, but I'm curious if it's this comma here that's causing our problem. Um, it was. So we can see right away that we've got a problem. Um, right, our title is wrapping. Um, so we will fix that. Um, and one of the first things we can do is um, we can go and we can say um, on our H3, we can say that our overflow is hidden. Um, and that should um, make it so it doesn't wrap, right? So now we don't wrap anymore, but we also aren't showing that, hey, this title is a lot longer than it should than it appears. Um, and so the other thing we can do is um, ellipsis, right? Ellipses. Um, text dash. Is it overflow ellipses? Um, overflow hidden. Um, need to figure out what the tailwind class is. So ellipse. Piece, or ellipsis. Oh, maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Um, and that, that's what we're seeing here, right? Is this ellipsis? Um, text dash ellipsis. Okay. Um, text clip. So I probably don't need the overflow hidden. Um, text clip. Um, so we can also just add text dash ellipsis. Um, and does that work? No. Um, because I didn't spell it right. It needs two L's. Um, Still doesn't work because it needs to know where to add it. Um, so if we do overflow hidden, um, that should. No. What am I doing wrong here? So they've got the overflow hidden and the text dash ellipsis. It's an ellipsis. Um, oh, I can just do truncate. Um, so use truncate to prevent text from wrapping and truncate overflowing text with an ellipsis if needed. Yes. So what is these text ellipsis to truncate overflowing text with an ellipsis if needed? Um, text clip just cuts it off. Um, so it looks like I don't even need these. I can just go truncate. Um, let's see what truncate sets up for us, right? Um, so if we go here, there we go. So this is what we expect. Um, and so if we go inspect this, um, our truncate adds overflow hidden ellipsis. Oh, white space, no wrap. That's the piece I was missing. That was this piece I was missing. Um, and I always forget I always have to Google how to do the ellipsis stuff. Um, but one thing we want to do um, is this area right here could use some padding. 
Um, we could add it to the H the H3. Um, but I don't know that that's how we want to do it. Um, the other thing we can do um, is instead of doing 2.2 RAM, well, l let's leave it how it is and I'll show you what the issue is, right? Um, so to target this class, um, there are a couple ways we can target it, right? Um, but we need a style. Um, and there are a couple of ways that we can target specific pieces of, of the DOM or of, of a grid, right? Um, if we go inspect this, <clears throat> and we look at this grid, we can target from grid line to grid line, um, which is probably what we want to do. So we can say from two to three um, that we want some padding, right? Um, does it, if we do layout here, um, we can show, we don't have any names. Um, that's that's another thing we can do. Um, oh, that's nice. I like the track sizes showing us what we've got. Um, we don't have any area names. Um, extending the grid lines would allow us to, um, this helps with subgrid. <laughs> so if we were gonna do subgrid, um, we can extend the grid lines to kind of help with that. Um, article container. Oh, so we can see the different grids that are available here. Um, that's really cool. I like that. Um, and we could even overlay Flexbox on this. That's really cool. Um, really cool. Um, DOM properties, accessibility. Um, but what I want to do is, is show how to target this. And I, I forget, um, grid target um, specific um, row and column. Um, oh, grid nth child, huh? Let's instead of do that, let's say we want to target a specific cell. Um, use a wrapper element with its display set to contents. They're using nth child. Um, So grid container, grid item. They're adding specific grid items to it. Um, last column in a five column grid is nth child, nth child minus one, blah, blah, blah. So they're using nth child. Um, fighting CSS part 2024. Exactly, Eska. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I know there's a way to do it, right? Um, so with our template columns, we've got one FR, one FR, and our rows, we've got one FR, one FR. Um, nth child 2N. Um, this is so row two seven that that makes that specific item 
Um, Great column three. Oh, so th this guy's saying that that's a proposed um, nth call. Um, there's there's a way to set up like a grid template, and maybe that's the way we want to do it. Um. Like if we go look at um, a CSS grid generator, um, and this is the one that I tend to like. Um, and so we've got um, we've got this one that's set up as two point two rem. 2.2, and this is in rem. I guess we can do em because we don't have a root. Um, and yeah, I don't care about the fractions here. I and mean, we add another row that's a fraction. Um, and we want to target this specific area. Um, I guess we could do an area name. That's a good way to do it. Um, so this is the title area. Um, we can call this the article dash title. Um, and if we look, um, it sets up the grid te template areas here. Um, and then we can grab this article title. So they are putting a div in there. And they're giving it the area of article title. Um, so if we want to add ours, that's probably the right way to do it. Um, Yeah, um, so the right thing to do here is to do div. Um, and what we can do is we can actually um, shift end. Um, and then we can do control shift P and we can do a wrap um, with Emmet. Oh, do we not have that Emmet? Surround with Emmet. That's what we want to do. And so our Emmet, we're just going to surround this with a div. Um, we can say that, you know, this div um, has the row-span of two. Um, and there we go. Um, and the nice thing about Emmet is, you know, we can specify HTML that way. Um, if I do um, prettier... An unsupported file type. Um, I thought we added, and that's probably why it's not reformatting. Um, so we're getting script highlighting here, um, but um, let's go look at prettier. Um, and inside of prettier, we did add analog. Um, so it is in here. We've also got a view file. Um, that's interesting that it's telling us that um, prettier main article dot component dot analog has an unsupported type. Um, Let's look at um, the prettier stuff here. Um, so it's going to run it for analog files. Um,
I don't know if we um, there, there's probably a way to do it um, for now I'm not gonna worry about it I'll just manually um, do some editing here right um, so we no longer need the row span here that's fine um, and then this one we also need to surround with a div um, so we'll go to the end and we'll surround with emmets we're going to give this a div um, and this will be the article title there we go interesting that it decided to wrap there that would not be my first choice um but that's okay um so weird that um video doesn't work it's gonna bug me um What is prettier? Can I fix the prettier unsupported type? Prettier unsupported type in WebStorm. Um, make a change. Check the ID and the command correctly. Here's some things. Doesn't format dot svelte. Um, So here it's saying it's set up to automatically G to JS, TS, JSX, and TSX. I add a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, you can add stuff to it using glob patterns. Yep. Um, so here it's just saying that it doesn't format Svelte files. Um, Configure prettier to format svelte files as HTML files. Um, add that there. So in the prettier RC, we probably need to make some setup. And I will bet we can go steal that setup because I'm willing to bet that Chow has probably done some work in the analog repo. So if we go to analog.js and we go look at the repo itself. Um, and you using simple English describe what analog is in two sentences. Ooh, that's a tough one, Eska. Um, in simple English, um, Analog is a meta framework built in um, Astro um, that adds special tools to Angular would be um, the best way I can describe analog. It's, it's, it's an Angular meta framework. Um, so if you want to try to like think of something like um, Next to, um, to React, right? Um, Next is built on top of React, but it's a meta framework that adds more about it. Okay, so meta framework doesn't mean anything to you. So, um, so a meta framework is a framework built on top of a framework, is, is a way to think of it, right? Um, so analog is a framework, um, and it's hosted inside of Astro but it's a framework built on top of the Angular framework. Um, why, right? Why do we care? Um, so if we look, um, because Anal Analog was a meta framework, it had Vite, um, and it still uses Vite for its production builds, um, whereas Angular uses Vite for the, um, for like, testing. Um, so when you run the the web server, right, um, from the ES build builder, 
Um, it uses V to power that one. Um, but the actual ES build uses ES, or the actual build uses ES build. Analog uses V for everything, right? For serving and building. Um, and it also uses VTest for testing, right? Um, it supports um, SSR, which Angular supports, but it also supports SSG, but it allows you to do both also, right? Like a hybrid SSR, SSG. Um, so we can do static site um, generation and static site rendering. Um, and then the other thing that Analog gives us right out of the box is file-based routing. Um, but we can also do API routes, which we'll take a look at once we start grabbing API stuff, right? Um, and then there's there's a bunch of other things, but these are like the highlights here, right? Um, so that, that's where it becomes a meta framework um, because Angular doesn't have file-based routing. And we can see the file-based routing here. I don't have a routes.ts in here, I don't think. It might set one up. Yeah, there's there's no routes.ts set up inside of here, right? Um, and so Analog has a convention where you add pages, um, and then we've got a home page, right? And the parentheses around it mean that this is the index page. Um, and so if I wanted to add um, like an articles page, um, I could do that. I could just go into the pages and add um, right, a new file. And here I can just say um, article.page.analog. Um, um, and so now we've added the article. Um, and you know what? We, we should probably rename this because we want it to be articles. Um, because we'll be adding an ID to it, right? So we'll be adding route-based IDs. Um, and so inside of here, now we can add a template. We could say, you know, here are your articles. Um, and there we go. Now we've got a template for that. And so now if we go back to the app, um, this is our home route, right? But we can also route to articles. And, you know, here are your articles. Um, but if I go to like the JSON route that doesn't exist, it, you know, that's interesting. Where did we route to? Um, let's refresh this. It should have routed to home, I guess. Um, so from articles, we're in our articles, right? Um, and then JSON. Yeah, it did route to home, but it's not loading the home route. I've got, um, oh. So it couldn't match the route and it threw an error. Um, so we'll need to figure out what I'm doing wrong with the routing there. Um, so, so they made backend framework from Angular. Um, it's, Kind of, it adds like API routes and stuff like that that you can, um, but Angular gives you, you can do API routes in Angular 2 um, also, not Angular 2, but also. Um, so it, it gives you some nice things on the server, right? Because Angular is always going to be served from a server. Um, yeah, it, you can't, like backend stuff you're not going to write in, um, analog but you can specify back-end routes yes um absolutely and you can do that in angular today um, when you set up an angular application um if you go let's go to angular dev right um, and inside of here if we look at um ssr um so with server-side rendering or SSG static, right? Um, this stuff will run on the server. And then once Angular bootstraps, um, it, will, um, it will take over, right? So, um, so yes, absolutely. 
your um, Eska, if you are injecting raw tokens into your services, those are plain text invisible to people. And Sam, hey, thank you. You are actually my first chatter um, from from YouTube. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, and you know, feel free to chime in. I I haven't figured out how to share chats between both yet. Um, um, I could put there there is a way that I could put a chat up on the screen like somewhere here um, that a lot of a lot of streamers do. I don't know if I want to. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, so um, I'm still trying to decide like what's the best thing to do. So you guys provide feedback, please. Um, because that, that'll be a big help. Um, yeah, I, I'm on both, both platforms, Sam. Um, so um, yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome to watch wherever you want. Um, I'm not promoting any platform. And in fact, um, part of the reason why I started doing the YouTube platform is that I was having difficulty. Um, it just takes a lot of work to get stuff up on YouTube. Um, this Eska guy is the best one. <laughs> I figured. Um, Sir Machado. Mix, mix chat will be nice. I Okay, I will take that. Um, I I don't think I can mix the chats between the two, but I can display a mixed chat on the screen. Um, and um, I could actually do that right now, right? Um, so you guys tell me if this is distracting and we'll turn it off if it is. Um, but there's there's one thing I'm curious about here. And it's got these stupid emojis right over the top of it. But like here, um, if I pin that, what happens? Um, I need to go look in a browser. Um, but yeah, it, it, it just pins it in the chat here. OK. Um, so um, I got distracted. I get distracted very, very easily. Um, you guys probably know that by now. Um, but here, let's go add. Um, I saw it. Yeah, highlight, no. That box, here we go. Um, if I add this source, add an existing source chat box. Do I already have that in here? Um, so if I add this um, and I put it like right here, and then we go into the properties on this, and do that. Always show messages. Um, we'll delay the chat. No, uh, I don't want to delay. Um, show platform icons. That's fine. We could show that. Um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll enable all of that. Um, Browser settings, I don't want to mess with that. We close that. Are we seeing that on the stream? I don't see it there. Don't see it there. Um, and look here, chat box. Um, I don't want to go through a quick tutorial. Yeah, it's it's all there. Save those settings. 
Um, so if I launch this, there's something going on with my chat integration. Um, so maybe at some point in time, this will show up. Um, Oh, there we go. It looks like it just took a little while for it to catch up. So only new messages will show up, um, but there we go. Um, now we can see people's chat on the stream. Let me know if that gets to be, um, I don't know. Let me know if that gets to be crazy. This find only show my messages. <laughs> That's awesome, Eska. Um, yeah, um, that that should at least help you guys to see what's going on between the two um, between the two streams. But yeah, to answer your question, Eska, um, we've got static stuff here, right? Um, yeah. And so, wait, why didn't Sam's go? But Eska's did, and Sir Machado is there too. Let me go and, well, wait, Jessica came in from both. Um, Sam, try sending another message. I'm just curious here. Uh, you know, let's, let's see if we can get this figured out. Um, but we'll see if your messages come through also. Um, and just looks delayed um so there we go it looks fine i guess okay um and sir machado you're showing up as green that's awesome i, I think it's good um and there is a bit of a delay so um there I've tried to turn the delay down as much as possible, um, but there there is definitely still a delay. Um, so you know we'll we'll figure that out too. But I'm glad that um, everything seems to be working out. Um, and and please feel free to provide me feedback on stuff like this too, right? Because um, you know it, it helps. It definitely helps the channel for um, people to feel. Um, um, just like part of the stream. Can I not? There we go. Um, that's weird. That's okay. So me resizing it doesn't help. You can bypass message. Per <laughs> I don't have limits set, um, but that's that's hilarious. That is actually an interesting point. Um, yeah, you know, I, I could probably rate limit you if I really, if I really thought you were a problem, right? Um, so yeah, I could time you out for 10 seconds, right? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, thank you guys for, for providing feedback and for helping me beta test right my stream in the middle of my stream because that's always the professional way to do this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got our route, we've got our article. Um, I do need to figure out what's going on here, right? Why I'm breaking stuff. Ooh, and we also have an issue. Now with the main article component. Oh yeah. Um, now that we've got the div, um, if we look, our stuff is broken. And, and this is this can be the problem with wrapper stuff, right? Um, is if we look here, this is going off the side because the div is going off the side even though it should only take up the width of the container. Um, so down here, we have to say, you know, our article title um, is going to have um, a max width 
Um, why am I doing it here? Right. Um, we can we can add that article title if we want to, but here we can just say that it's got a max W of full, um, and it's also got a min width of full because we want it to take up everything. Um, and the other thing we want to do is just give it a padding of like two. Um, so it's going to pull everything off of all of the sides. Um, but that will probably give us um, an indication of the issue I'm talking about here. Um, so now if we go inspect this, um, once again, our, our long stuff is working. Um, but if we look at our grid, see how we're right up against the grid rows here? Um, so we've got a problem here. Um, the, this div is outside, and the, the padding's not working anymore, right? So now we're even worse off because now we're right on the baseline because we've got this top padding. Um, and that's that's what I was pointing out that um, you know I wanted to talk about here in a bit. This 2.2 rem isn't going to work. Um, but what we can do is we can say that we want this to be min content. Um, think that's the right one. We'll go take a look if it doesn't work. Uh, no. <laughs> right. So now if we go take a look at our, um, go inspect this. Um, we'll see that I've broken the grid. Um, now it's a column grid, right? There's two columns. We don't have, or it's got two rows and this is way outside of it. I've broken something. Something's very, very wrong. Um, so my min content is not working. So we'll go take a look at Tailwind. Um, you've got a YouTube channel? Um, <laughs> you've got a YouTube channel with over 100k subs? Eska. Eska, Eska, Eska. I need to go take a look at your channel. I am very jealous. Um, I don't think I will ever catch that. Um, I will be honest. Um, I deleted a message. What am I deleting messages for you? I'm not deleting these messages. Stop deleting messages. Oh, I timed you out. That's why you got deleted. That's good. Um, So here I am, I'm looking at, wow, way to go. Um, is this Polish on your channel? Um, I'm subscribed. I don't know, I don't know what language this is, but um, it's Polish. Made with AI help, just stupid jokes in my native language. That's awesome. Um, I love AI stuff. Um, and you guys probably saw, let's see, let's go here. Um, you guys probably saw me post this on Twitter. Um, but, um, I've been playing with learning comfy UI. Um, and so, um, this, these, these images are generated using comfy UI, using SDXL, um, and then I'm using um, Instant ID to put faces on here. Um, and that's why, you know, got the glasses and a little bit of the look, right, in anime. Um, but I'm using different models to generate this. I don't even remember which model this one was. Um, I think this is the Juggernaut model. Um, I think this is the Albedo model. Um, this is like real viz. And, it looks hilarious, right? Because you've got my face with um, green spiky hair. I think this is inspired by like Gon from Hunter x Hunter. And my daughter has like Kilowa style hair, but it's long. It's hilarious to me. Uh, this one's 
currently my favorite. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of using AI to generate stuff. Um, that's really cool. Um, I may have to go check out some videos and stuff, but that, that's amazing. A hundred, almost a hundred K subscribers. I'm really impressed. I'm very impressed. Um, yeah, let's, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Um, with the, the main content that I added, right? Um, so let's go take a look at our grid and our grid template columns. No, it's rows. We want grid template rows. Um, so min max. Um, and it's been a while. So, so min max, that, that's what we want to do. Um, so we want... Um, Can I not specify min content? Content. Um, CSS minimum content height. Um, and I'm probably, so min height, yeah, min, oh, it's min dash content. Um, so I think I can set this, um, and here I can do grid row minimum content height. Um, we use min max set the minimum height of two. That's not true. Uh, min max sets the minimum height of one row, um, and it, it's between the two. So like, it, it will never get smaller than min, and it will never get bigger than um, the the max. Um, so line name line one hundred fit content min content. Um, I think if I just add the, if I add the um, dash to it, it'll probably fix it. Um, and see here, here we're talking about min max, right? Um, so these have a minimum height of 10 pixels and a maximum height of 60 pixels. Um, and you can see, right, this, this is filling it, right? Uh, actually, these have three characters, it's the height. Um, so um, fit content, that's probably what we want to do. Um, flex, max content, min content. Um, I think we just add the dash here and we should be good. And it's not a function, it's just min content, I believe. Um, I always have to look this stuff up. Um, where did my image go? So here's my main article. Um, what's going on with my grid? So we've got two rows, but now we've lost our columns. Oh, I, I put it on the columns and not on the rows. Uh, so what was this before? 25% um, and here we do min dash content. Uh, min dash content. So there we go. That should fix it for us, and it does. Um, so now if we go and inspect this, um, we'll see that now our text fits well within, um, and I wish this wouldn't go away. Um, is there a way to pin? Uh, well, actually, if I do that, it'll stay. So that's, that's kind of funny. Um, but um, here, the um, 
you can see that the, the text is only going up to the edge of the padding that we added. It's fitting within it. Um, and then this row will adjust. So, um, you know, if we come back and we, we make, you know what, we decide we want to make this bigger. So we decide to make it an H1. Um, we go take a look. Um, we can already see that the wrapping is behaving properly. Um, and um, the, the grid has grown appropriately, right? We can see that the grid lines um, appropriately line up. And, um, you know, when we, when we hover over it, um, we can see that the padding is in the appropriate places. Um, and, you know, everything's lining up the way we want it to. Um, so that, the way I did it with a 2.2 rem is always going to lead to problems like that, especially once you start um, adding in box sizing and stuff like, then you, then you have to start getting into content, right? Like the content box and all of that stuff. Um, and so that's why we have things like min content and max content and stuff like that. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, so the next thing to do is just to get the article blurb in here. Um, and, um, then we'll have, we'll have worked out the skeleton, um, for our main, our main article, right? Um, one thing we could do is we could go and, and let's inspect this. And on our main article class, we've got this border. Um, and let's just add um, border um, none here and see what it looks like. Um, and that's okay. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to figure this out, right? Um, for right now, the border makes it easy to see stuff and easy for us to determine where things should be. Um, so we'll take a look at that um, as we get further in, right? Um, but Eska, I have no RTX GPU right now, so I can't test everything like you did. Um, I used to... I used GPU rent service called Vast AI for another project and made like a thousand images or 10,000 images for eight bucks. Yeah, and that's one of the things I'm trying to think about right now. Um, my GPU is um, an RTX 4080, but it's the laptop version. So the 4080 has 16 gigs of RAM, but I'm running the laptop. Um, I've got a laptop, and the laptop version has 12 gigs of RAM. Um, and that means, so with, with 16 gigs of RAM, I could run like a 7, a 7 billion LLM unquantized, right? So I could run the true model. Um, with 12 gigs of RAM, I can't. Um, and there, there are other things like context size. I have, to, I have to cut back on context size and things like that. Um, so renting them is very attractive, especially for $8 for 10,000 images. Um, these extra values, in, yeah, they are very tricky. Um, and I mean, what this winds up doing, and we can see it here, right? Um, and this is one of the things that, that people complain about, um, and maybe rightly so, with, um, with, with Tailwind, right? Is that I'm adding all these extra values, um, but if we go look at the, if we go look at the grid, right? Um, so this border secondary winds up adding just the 65% opacity to our um, border, right? We've got our border class here um, and our grid template rows. Notice here, this min, min content underscore one fraction, it's turned into min content space one fraction, right? So, um, we're writing a whole bunch of stuff, but we could just go in and say, hey, um, you know, we could just go and say here. Um, we could we could pull both of these out. Um, and we could add a style. Um, 
And this is where, it, you know, it, it gets a little bit tricky because we could say, hey, on the host, um, we're going to add a style um, and we're going to add um, our grid template columns. Um, grid template columns. Um, and here we're, we're going to go 25% in one fraction. That's the same as this. Um, and then the next thing we can do is we can say, hey, we want our grid template columns or rows. Yep. And it's going to be min content in one fraction, right? Um, and then we can take the rest of this out. Um, and so this is, to my mind, easier to remember and read. Um, but it's going to produce the same result, right? Um, and so if we go look um, and we inspect, um, we'll see that we no longer have all of that stuff in there. Yeah. Wait, grid calls to grid rows. Oh, that's the article container. This is the main article, right? Um, so inside of here, we've still got the grid as it was set up. Um, but it's not here anymore. If we go look, it's been moved into the ng host, um, and the ng host targets this specific ngc. Right, this this stuff is generated at compile time, um, and that's what namespaces it. But it's the same thing, right? It's the same grid layout. It's targeted, um, and this is a legitimate concern that um, people have with Tailwind um, because this. I could copy and paste this from a grid generator or things like that. So, yeah. Um, is grid a better choice in this case? I like flex. Um, so the reason I chose grid for this case is that we've really got um, something spanning two rows, um, and then we've got two content areas, right? Um, if I did flex, I could do, I could do a flex going this direction, right, um, left to right. And then I could do another flex going top to bottom, right? So this flex would sit inside of this flex element here. Um, and then this flex element would control the image, right? Um, we could do that. I chose grid um, because it gives me the ability to, um, it, it gives me a little bit more control. And if I wanted to break this down and maybe add like um, a bleed or something for the article, I could do that with, um, I mean, we could do it with flex. You can do it with either um, and use the tool that's um, most comfortable to you. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. And you could put flex, absolutely. Um, and for me, if, I, if I'm doing 2D layouts like this, right, where I've got, um, an X and a Y direction, then I, I pick grid, right? For 2D, 2D layouts. Um, but for like one dimensional layouts, um, I use flex and I've got flex in here. So like this layout at the top, I'm using flex. Um, and the flex is controlling this element here that controls, you know, the blog header. And then this element over here that controls the styling, right? That's that's a one-dimensional layout to me, right? It's going um, in the X direction. If I have a one-dimensional layout in the Y direction, I always pick flex, and that's why. Um, so yeah, um, Sir Machado, the padding from the left of the image should be the same as the right of the text. You're saying here. It's killing me. So, Sir Machado, are you... Um, Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying here, this is killing you. Um, Sir Machalo is probably a designer, and he's probably right, so we're going to go fix this. Um, so we're going to say that it's padding 2, but um, padding from the left is 0. Um, and I think that will work. Um, so thank you for the feedback on that. Um, because this is where um, I definitely can use more information, right? Um, and I appreciate people giving me good, um, good ideas. But now we've got the same padding 
um, from the left as we've got from the text. Um, what we don't have is the padding over here being the same. Um, and I don't know if that's going to cause issues or if that's a problem. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for the feedback on that one, Sir Machado. Um, and you know what? I should be looking at the YouTube chat too, because we do have people there. But um, so yeah, um, Eska, yeah. Um, Krishnaala, hey, welcome to the stream, Krishnaala. Um, I'm used to be great CSS once I started JavaScript and Angular Dev. It's been a while since I used CSS. I feel bad. I I love CSS. CSS um, is one of my favorite things to do. But like you said, um, part of what's actually hurt my CSS quite a bit is um, Tailwind. I won't deny that. Um, Tailwind and Daisy have hurt my CSS quite a bit. Um, but the, the project we're working on right now at work, um, it has to be embeddable in our partners' sites. Um, and that necessitates very pure CSS. Um, we don't want to have our partners have to rely on a framework. We also don't want our CSS to mess with our partners' frameworks, right? So if our partners are using Tailwind and Daisy and we introduce Tailwind and Daisy, we don't want to mess with what they're doing, right? Um, and so um, I'm having to learn CSS and I love it. Um, you know, the, the very first thing we did on the site was pure CSS. Um, the Angular Sudoku game is done entirely in pure CSS. I think we used SCSS, but we probably shouldn't have because um, you, got, you guys know that you can nest CSS, right? Um, that, that that works in CSS now. Um, and we can, we can look it up on MDN. Um, MDN nested CSS. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you can do in like SAS and less and stuff like that, you can um, now do um, in, in baseline, right? So um, December, 2023 um, works across all browsers. Um, and so now you can do the same things, right? So you can have a parent rule and nest a child rule inside of it. Um, and you can also do, you know, this, this, is, this is the main reason that I would add SCSS to my Angular stuff. Um, and so, you know, just like SCSS works as parent rule with a child rule, turns out into parent rule and then parent rule dot child rule. Um, and you know we can add hover um and so you'll get stuff like that right um so the the nesting selector works the same way um you would expect it to although you can add it to the end right so there's like even some cool stuff that you can do um so um yeah a lot of really, really cool things that we can do with CSS out of the box now. Um, thing to be aware of is it's pretty recent. So December of 2023 is when this became available in all browsers. Um, so it looks like they all released at pretty much the same time. Um, Firefox, I don't know what version Firefox is on. Um, Okay, so Firefox has had it since August, but everybody else added it in December. Um, and then Samsung looks like it has some issues. Um, so um, image is not right. Okay. Cover or something with image. Okay, if the image will always be that size, um, no problem if not. Um, the image will not always be this size, and that's part of the reason why I did it um, the way that we did it. Um, and I'm really sorry that it's breaking your um, your designer brain because um, I, I get it. Um, there are things that just you know cause me pain when I look at Angular code. Um, this this image will not always be the same size. Um, it could be different height. It could be different width. Um, you know, just whatever we whatever we do with it, 
Um, so what I did is I gave it the same container size and then I'm doing auto margins. So it will always sit um, centered or whatever. Um, the, maybe the right thing to do, um, like what you're saying, um, oh, no, 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 no. Do the, do the crop thing. What's the crop thing? Um, yeah, if the image will always be the same site, indeed. Do you recommend grid over flex? Do I recommend grid over flex? No. Um, like we were talking about before, use flex for one-dimensional layouts, right? Um, so if it goes X direction like we've got here, or if it goes Y direction, right, then use flex. Flex is always going to be superior, and flex will give you some nicer tools for resizing. Um, with that too, right? So like here, this header plus my body content, this is flex from top to bottom. And we can see that here. Um, so if we look, we've got a flex container here and, and right, so the header is a flex um, and then the content is a, also flex. So this is a, this is a one dimensional layout, right? In the Y direction. Um, so use flex there. Um, the caveat I will give is if you're going to use subgrid, right? Subgrid's a nice way to line things up. So um, if you want to use like rows and columns for the header and the body, and you want to line up the body with the header, then definitely use subgrid. Um, and that way you can get these items to align with the items up here. Um, instead of fighting with it, right? And so there's there's kind of a science to figuring out which kind of layouts you should use. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a problem. And yeah, I, I'm really sorry. If the image will not be the same, um, he has to fill contain cover or something with the image. Um, so I need to, yeah, image is right. Oh, wow. Now we can do that in CSS. Yeah, we can do nesting. Um, do that crop thing and give always the same. So, oh, crop, crop. That's probably what you meant there, right? So much child do crop and always give the same size. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying, Sir Machado. Um, in CSS, um, there's a way to specify kind of the image viewport and it will always be the same size. Um, that is good, good advice. Very good advice. Um, I like that. We'll, we'll figure that out. Um, and having somebody who's an actual designer giving me advice, I really appreciate, um, so we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, the only pain I have right now is caused by the fact that I wrote more characters in the chat than in VS Code for the last hour. <laughs> I'm a distraction. I'm going to be a distraction, right? Um, yeah, I, I feel you there. Um, can't be static and right if an image is resizing. Image that it takes all the size, an image will be so close to the text. That, yeah. Excellent call out, Sir Machado. Thank you for that. We will fix our image then. Um, very, very good call outs. Um, but my company said for six years now that I'm the best. I'm a full stack. Well, I'm. I appreciate the. I appreciate the call outs. Um, they. Um, like I said, I am not the best designer. Um, I can take a design and make it look exactly like the designer did. Um, but when it comes to me designing stuff, um, my stuff almost always winds up looking wrong. Um, so um, I appreciate the feedback. Um, you should match the padding on the right of the text. If image is resizing, you can't. Okay, I get that. Um, so you're saying over here to the right, we should have the same padding as over here. Um, okay, we will fix that. Um, that's going to require some more work than I've done here, um, which means we're going to need to figure out what size of image we want to put in here. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll fix that and we'll fix the padding over here. 
um, because that's really good feedback. I appreciate that. Um, that will not pass your review. Okay. I, I appreciate that actually a lot. Um, it, it, it's good. And that's one of the things that, um, as you get more experienced, um, that's the kind of feedback I look for. Um, I like people who are going to challenge my ideas. Um, and do it in a way that's constructive, right? Um, you know, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discount somebody because they're they're not being constructive. But um, Sir Machado, the way um, you approached it was was very very right, and um, I can understand why your company likes you as a as as the designer and stuff because you came into it and you had fact based things, right? Um, what I'm doing here is wrong. Um, and it's going to look weird until I do it right. Um, and it's, it's very, very good to call me out on that. Um, and it, it helps me to learn too. Right. Um, so I appreciate that, but it, it's also a healthy interaction with, um, it's a healthy interaction to show Things aren't always, you know, rainbows and unicorns at work. Um, you're going to disagree with people. Um, you're going to have heated debates, heated discussions. You're somebody's going to say something um, that maybe, and, and I'm not saying anything about what Sir Machado said here, but somebody may say something that is a personal attack against you, right? Um, and and how do you handle that? Um, I think it's, I think it's healthy to have that kind of stuff happen, um, and it's it's healthy to respond to it, um, and and understand that you know, people, people quite often have the best intentions. Um, so thank you for the feedback. Um, my first year I was not like that, but with time and errors, well, it will not pass, and that's that's a sign of experience. Um, being willing to stand up for something, but not just stand up for it, but have fact-based reasons why what you're standing up for matters. Um, and, you know, today we, we just had a discussion like that architecturally um, where, you know, I, I had to go in and stand up for, you know, what, what I thought architecturally is the right way to go. Um, and I was the only one in the room who felt that way. Um, and that can be very intimidating, right? To be talking to people who you respect who are very, very intelligent. Um, and they completely disagree with what you're saying. Um, so, um, you know, one, don't take it personally when somebody disagrees with you, right? It, uh, they care just as much about what you're doing as you do. Um, and it's not a personal attack on you. It's not an attack on your abilities. Um, it's just that um, they may see things differently and they may see different things than you see. Um, and in discussing the differences, you may come to even an even better solution, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and I totally agree with that point. I'm so much out of, you know, it, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you disagree, but if they can prove um, what the dis you know why they disagree and why it matters um, then I totally agree with you right um, and that's that's the when you're in a healthy um, when you're in a healthy environment um, those kind of discussions um, are are healthy and fun and they they, they help um, they help the product they help the code be better um, when you're in a toxic environment, um, those kind of discussions are often used to grind you down, to beat you over the head. Um, and they're not there to lead to someplace good um, quite often. And I've been in situations like this where um, 
a whole meeting is called um, and somebody who's being abusive is calling you out in front of 40 people that have no idea why they're there listening to somebody make fun of you, right? Um, so, um, you know, it sucks, but um, don't do it yourself, right? Um, it's, it's going to happen. And it's it's a horrible situation when it does, um, but you know as long as you can be um, I don't even know what I want to like as long as you are working for what's best for the software and what's best for the company, um, you know that you're doing the you're doing the best that you can and you're um, you don't have control over what others do. Um, and, um, you know, keep, keep working for the betterment. There will be people that see that and recognize that. And if things don't change, um, see what you can do about changing your situation. Right. Um, you know, sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Um, and it, it is sad when that happens, but, um, yeah, we, we got way off track talking about images right um but I, I i really do appreciate um sir Machalo and you know even even if he'd come in and been like oh that's stupid um i do i do like the fact that you called it out by saying that it's hurting you because um that, that grabbed my attention and allowed us to discuss it we will definitely fix this um so one thing we can do um is we can say, hey, um, we want a certain size. And I think if we go like 250 by 250, um, that should work, right? And I think it is just 250 by 250. So we'll go for square, um, square sizes. Um, and let's see if that, yeah. So now we've got a square size. It's 250 pixels by 250 pixels. Um, and so now it's going to be square. Um, if we look right now, this is not 250 by 250, right? It's 224 by 224. Um, and the reason for that is that we're shrinking, right? And as we shrink, whoops. Where is the bottom? There it is. As we shrink, that's going to continue to shrink. Um, so what do we want to do, right? Um, we want this to shrink too and our text to follow it back. Um, and so we need a way um, for all of this to resize. Um, How do I want to do that? Um, because as we get smaller, right, our left to right area is not changing. Um, but um, we either want this. Well, no, we don't. We don't want that. Um, hmm. way we're also getting bad experience right um, that's not that's not going to lead to a good design situation um, but yeah the shrink is the problem so what what can we do right because um, right now we've said hey it's it's 